morning. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church, Edinburgh. All of our songs are pre-recorded and are public domain. Our theme today is Don't Be Afraid, Enter Into the Joy of Your Master. We begin our worship by singing hymn number 663 in LSB, Rise My Soul to Watch and Pray, verses 1, 2, and 3. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all of my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you all, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our introit today, hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant. For no one living is righteous before you. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring my soul out of trouble. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness, answer me in your righteousness. Here we, are, we pray, Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. We worship our Lord by singing verses 4 and 5, Rise my soul to watch and pray.
be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Dispel from us the works of darkness and grant us to live in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith may never be found wanting through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading is from Zephaniah chapter 1, beginning with verse 7, where God's judgment comes upon those who continually reject him. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guest. And on the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's son and all who array themselves in foreign attire. On that day, I will punish everyone who leaps over the threshold and those who fill their master's house with violence and fraud. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will be heard from the fish gate, a wail from the second quarter, a loud crash from the hills. Wail, O inhabitants of the mortar, for all the traders are no more. All who weigh out silver are cut off. At that time, I will stretch Jerusalem with lamps. I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the men who are complacent, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do ill. Their goods shall be plundered, and their houses laid to waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there, A day of wrath is that day a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blasts and a battle cry against the fortified cities, against the lofty battlements. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 90, beginning with verse 1, going through verse 12. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust and say, Return, O children of man, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with a flood, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger, by your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet they, their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. This is the word of our Lord, our Next hymn is hymn number 508 in LSB. The day is surely drawing near, verses 1, 2, and 3.
epistle lesson is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have me to write anything to you, for you yourselves are fully aware of the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. The Holy Gospel is written in Matthew chapter 25, beginning with verse 14. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, For it will be like a man going on a journey, who had his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. And then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug it in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents, and here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents, and where I had made two talents more. And his master said to him, Well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had received the one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I had have not sowed, and gathered where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming, I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But for the one who has not, even that what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness, and in that place there will be weeping, and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We worship our Lord by singing verses 4 and 5 of The Day is Surely Drawing Near. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The title of our message today is, Do Not Fear, Know Your Lord, and Enter Into the Joy of Your Master. As we're ending the church year, a couple Sundays ago we celebrated All Saints Day, where those who have trusted in the Lord are forever with our Lord in Christ, and we who are here on earth and still remain here on earth are also in Christ. So in one sense, we're together as one body in and with our Lord. What a joy it is to know that the joy that is set before us to be with our Lord forever is a blessing to know beyond our understanding. Last week, we talked about the importance of being prepared for the end times, for Judgment Day. And today we also consider that even though we look forward with joy to be with our Lord for him, with, with him forever in heaven, we also have a responsibility and a duty to be here on earth to do his will with the gifts that he has bestowed upon us. As we hear from our gospel lesson today, where Jesus gives this parable of a master and called his servants to him and that they gave he gave the servants talents one five talents or gifts one two and with to one one and then he said I'm going to be gone. I'm leaving for a while. Use these talents. And he was gone. The master was gone for a long time. And as we see this parable meaning to us also that our Lord bestows his gifts upon his church, upon each individual also, to be used for his glory and that he is going to be gone for a time he's been gone for 2000 years but he is coming back and that's what this parable is saying so when the master came back what did the one with the five talents say and do he said here lord here master here are five talents that you gave me and Here's five more. What did G the master say to him? Well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Beautiful part about these talents and these gifts. They were from the master. 
And those talents, those gifts, produced more by the servants making use of them and using them. How about the one with the two talents? Master, you delivered to me two talents, and here I have made two more. The master said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. That's what the Lord wants to say to each one of you too. On judgment day and on our last day when we see Jesus, he will say, well done, thou faithful servant, that good and faithful servant. He will bless each of you as God's works and his gifts and his talents flow through you. Sometimes we just have our minds set on heaven and looking forward to that and thinking that this earth is just drear and horrible and there's nothing we can do. No, we can't. But the gifts that God has given each one of you by the power of his Holy Spirit and in his strength and his word, he will work in you both to will and to do his good pleasure and will accomplish what his word has been sent to do. And he will complete that, what he has begun in you, until the day that we see Jesus himself. Unless we become like one of those that he gave the talent to, that one talent to. What did that man, that servant, do? Listen to what he says here. He also that received one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man. Was that really the truth? Was that master a hard, evil man? No. The one with that one talent didn't know his master. He didn't know that his master was a loving, caring master. He had thought he was a hard man. He never paid attention to the words or the life or the example that was told him, no doubt, about what that master and who he really was. He thought he was a hard man. And then he goes on and says, I know you're reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. Really? Was he that one that reap where he never sowed seed? Do you realize that this parable is talking about Jesus as being the master and the one that had the one talent accuses that you reap where you didn't sow? Are you kidding? Jesus is reaping where he didn't. What did he sow? He sowed with his life. He gave his life for you for me, for each one of us. He left all heaven's glory to come down here and humbled himself to be a man, to be rejected and to take all the punishment and the sin of our sin upon himself to pay our price. Yes, he did sow sorrows and rejection and tears of hurt that he was, that was cast upon him. Yes, that servant here that received one did not know his master and there's people out there that we know no doubt do not know our master their master either that's why he desires for us to share the good news that he's not a hard man god is filled with love he's a god of love he cares for us and that he gave his life for us What did the one with the one talent then say? Here, have what is yours. He didn't know his master. He didn't know the love of that master. What did he do? He went and hid that talent. And he went on his own way. He wanted to do it his way. He didn't want to fool around with the gifts that God gave him. That this master gave him. That's the same way with each one of us humans also. God has given each one and called each one of us to be his own. Don't hide what he has given you. He has given you his word. He's given you his spirit. 
to be used for God's glory, not for our own selfish means, not to accomplish our own works and good deeds, no, to be used by him with the gifts of not ourselves, but his working in and through us to bring forth fruits, to bring forth more talents, just like the one with five, he made five more. The one with two, two more. And easily the one with the one could have with, gave one and made more one because he went and hid it though. That's not what God desires. No, he desires that we use the gifts while we're here on earth. As long as we have breath, God has a purpose for us to be used to bring glory and honor to him. And what a blessing it is to know that he will accomplish that. And that's why the psalmist says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations, from one generation to the next. Know the master, know the Lord. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to the everlasting, you are God. And his word says that he knew each one of us before we were born. He knew us before we, he created the world. Receive his word and let him use us according to his perfect will. That's why the psalmist cries out and says, So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Yes, especially in the end times. Our Lord desires for us to be focused on him and his word. Because that last day, he says in our epistle lesson, will come like a thief in the night. But he says, don't be surprised. I've told you. He's given us his word. Yes, that day will come like a thief in the night. Even when people will say there is peace and security now. Then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman. And they will not escape. But he's warned us not to be fearful, but to realize what will happen in the end days, trials and tribulations and struggles. But he says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am with you. Be of good courage. Focus your eyes on the Lord, the author and the finisher of your faith. He will accomplish it. For that day will not surprise you like a thief. Because you are children of light. You know what's to happen. And you know the very end result. You know the joy that is set before us when we see Jesus completely. So that we can endure the trials and the struggles of this dark world. And be a light to those who are hurting. As he says, since you belong to the day, let us be sober. And put on what? The breastplate of faith and love. What does a breastplate do? It protects the heart. Faith and love of God will protect your heart too as we focus on his word and as we receive his word. That in our hearts we know that we are sinners but we have been forgiven and we are continually being forgiven. Because Christ is our righteousness. He dwells in our hearts. Faith comes from hearing that word. That word of Christ himself. And then he said also put on the helmet. Of the hope of salvation. What does the helmet do? It protects the head. God desires. To protect our minds also. How? By not becoming discouraged but having the hope of salvation that he works in us to accomplish his will here on earth and he accomplishes his will that he will also present each one of us faultless before our heavenly father on judgment day that we do not have to be a fear be afraid of that last day because he is the one who gives us his hope he has paid the penalty and we are to look forward to the joy of our salvation, even as we pray, create in me a clean heart, O God, and restore unto me the joy 
of your salvation. God has not destined us to wrath or to fear. No, he's going to be with us. But he's destined us to obtain salvation through Jesus Christ who has died for us so that whether we are awake and are alive or whether we are asleep, passed away our physical bodies, we will live with him. His word is true. We have eternal life. Therefore, he says, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Therefore, build one another up. Share that word to those who are hurting so that their faith may also trust in their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as he said to the Thessalonians, even so as you are doing, encouraging one another, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, but that you might be strengthened and encouraged by encouraging one another. And yes, even during the pandemic, we may not be able to get together like we desire to, but that doesn't mean that you cannot encourage somebody, that you cannot build one another up. Do so by praying for them. Do so by calling or texting or sending them a card or a note to encourage them in the faith. And even so much more as you see the day approaching, as our Lord said. Therefore, may God continually strengthen each of us to do his will, all to his glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. We go to our Lord in prayer. Almighty God, everlasting Father, you are worthy of being praised for all your gifts and graces which you have given to us, your unworthy people. Hear us this day as we cry to you for mercy towards all people as they have need. You have made us your people and preserved us through the ministry of your word and sacraments. Continue to pour out upon us grace upon grace that we may be kept in faith and guarded in hope. Make your church throughout the world one in doctrine, confession, and life, and give to your church faithful pastors who will preach and teach your word with conviction. Deliver us from confusion and error by the power of your Holy Spirit and raise up those who will continue to serve in faithfulness and humility. Deliver all enemies of your church and convert their hearts to repentance and faith. Strengthen all Christians in their faith and in their vocation of service as your children, that we may be obedient to your word and receive the salvation of, your, of our souls. Deliver the nations from oppression and ungodly rulers and governments. Bless all in authority within our own nation that righteousness may flourish and injustice end. Bless all those places where your people teach and learn that our children may honor you, walk in your commands, and show forth in their lives the fruits of the Spirit. Prevent all disaster and calamity. Deliver us from war and violence. Spare us from pestilence. Help us to know and rejoice in the good fruits of the earth. Bless all noble occupations and help the arts to flourish, that our lives may be enriched by beauty. Help us to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of the earth you supply for our common good. Receive with our song of praise and sacrifice of thanksgiving the tithes and the offerings we bring, that through good use of the skills, talents, and time that you have given us, you may be glorified in all that we are and do. Give unity to your people, that we may not be divided in doctrine or witness, and grant us grace that we may come to the Lord's table and receive there the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in sincere repentance and faith. Give to the sick healing, to the suffering relief, to the grieving hope, 
and to the dying peace. Hear us especially on behalf of those that we have requested our prayers for. Sustain us in the day of trial. Deliver us from all our enemies of body and soul and keep us steadfast in the day of trouble. Remembering that here we have no abiding city, but heaven is our home, give us your aid so that we may, by true faith and godly life, prepare for the coming of our Savior, doing the works that you have called us to do and accomplishing your purpose in our daily lives. Help us to multiply your mercy by loving our neighbor indeed and loving you with all our body and soul and strength and will through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We go to our Lord in prayer, the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We worship our Lord by singing verses 6 and 7. The day is surely drawing near. May Christ our intercessor be. prayer and for the benediction we go to our Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now receive the blessing and the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We conclude our service by singing hymn number 733 in LSB, O God, our help in ages past. Thy saints have dwelt.